Hey everyone, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I wanted to go over five resources that you can use to continue learning how to code if, for example, your teacher hasn't been able to give you assignments and you still want to learn how to code or do other things. So I'm going to offer you five resources you can check out, four of which are free, and one isn't free, but it isn't too expensive, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, before we begin, I obviously have to mention that YouTube is an amazing resource and educational tool with videos on pretty much every topic. So if there's something you want to learn, there's probably someone out there that has made videos for it. I mean, that's how you found me, right? Now, the first resource I'm going to share is Scratch. And Scratch is an online block-based programming language, as well as an online community that allows you to start learning how to code. And while it looks really simple, it is actually pretty powerful. You can do some pretty advanced stuff and make some amazing projects using Scratch. But for someone that's never used it before or needs some new ideas for things to do, if you go to the Ideas tab, once you go to the website, there are a whole bunch of tutorials that you can check out by clicking Choose a Tutorial. And you can learn how to do a whole bunch of different things in Scratch. So for example, let's say you want to animate your name using letters and every time a letter is clicked, something happens. You can click on that tutorial and then go through it. They have a little video of which blocks to drag where and an explanation of what you can do. And I'm going to go back to the tutorials just so you can see that there are so many different tutorials that you can access and use. And as you learn how to do different things, you start learning how to build more complex projects. So then suddenly you'll have an idea and then you'll kind of Frankenstein some of these different tools that you learn or these different tricks and put it together to create some sort of project. You could also check out my YouTube channel, which you're currently on, because I have a whole bunch of different scratch tutorials for things to do. And I try to explain my thought process as I'm coding so you can understand like what I'm thinking. Scratch is used by millions of people around the world and it's an amazing tool. Now the next resource I want to share out is Hour of Code, which you may have already played with or seen at some Computer Science Education Week event that some teachers run during December. So I want to show you the activities that they have. If you click on activities at the top, you could select your grade level and how comfortable you are with coding. And then there's a whole bunch of different one hour activities where you can learn how to build different things. So for example, uh, one of the most popular ones is make a Flappy game. So if any of you remember the game Flappy Bird from a few years ago, Hour of Code has a module that shows you how to learn how to build that game. It is a little bit easier than actually building the real game because they do provide you some help and this is meant to be done in an hour, but you do learn a lot. They have a video to watch and then they let you code and they keep going back and forth until you build something and understand the thinking behind building a game like Flappy Bird. But if Flappy Bird is something that's not appealing to you, there are a whole bunch of different other modules, each lasting about an hour, that you can start doing to start learning how to code and to start learning how to think through these problems as you solve them. Because at the end of the day, that's what computer science is. It's just problem solving. The next resource I want to share out is meant more for high schoolers or maybe some middle schoolers that are very comfortable with coding or have some experience already. And this is an online curriculum for AP Computer Science principles. So this curriculum is online, it's free, and it uses another block-based programming language called Snap. Snap is a programming language that's very powerful and very advanced. But if you're coming from scratch, it's very accessible. So you'll see a lot of the same blocks, but then there are a lot more advanced blocks. And you can create your own blocks. You can even add your own JavaScript to some of the blocks and do some really powerful things in Snap. The Snap interface should be very familiar to anyone that's used Scratch because you have your blocks on the left, you have your scripting area in the middle, and you have your stage on the right. You also have your sprite corral in the bottom right. Now, once you have the Snap interface open, you can click on BJC curriculum and start going through the actual lessons. So we could start with unit one. And the cool thing about Snap is that I've created videos for almost all of the different lessons and labs. So if you get stuck or you're interested in checking out those videos, you can scroll through my videos in my YouTube channel, or you can go to the playlist tab and you could check out all the units and all of the labs that I've made videos for. And there are a lot of videos. So if you get stuck, there is a lot of help available. Personally, I really like Free Code Camp because it's completely project-based and it's completely free. So if you scroll down, you can look at the different certifications that they have and the different things you can learn. So let's say, for example, you want to learn how to do HTML and CSS and maybe a little bit of JavaScript. 
to create a website, you could do the responsive web design certification. I'm going to click on that. And you can see that there is about 300 hours worth of work if you want to go through all of these different challenges. And then you learn basic CSS, visual design, accessibility. You learn about the Flexbox, the grid. You learn a whole bunch of different things. And then you can continue on and learn some JavaScript here too. Just to show you what one of these lessons might look like, I'm going to click create a text field. And you can see that there is some reading you do on the left. There is a scripting or programming area in the middle, and then you could see your result on the right. So it's very similar to Scratch or Snap, except everything is text-based. So here we see some HTML, and we have to modify this based on the instructions on the left. Now the last resource that I want to share with you is called Udemy. And the reason I saved it for last is because most courses do cost money. And the way that Udemy works is that instructors create entire courses for whatever subject, and then they put them online, and anyone can choose to buy that course and get access to all of the lessons. If you want to learn how to do your taxes, there are courses for that. Just make sure you find a course that has a lot of ratings and a lot of them that are four or five stars. Now, I do want to mention that you should never pay more than $12 or $13 for a course. Some of them are listed at $100 or $200, and then they have like a 95% off sale. That sale is always running. So you can always find Udemy courses for about $10 every single week. And just to show you what this might look like, let's say you want to learn JavaScript. So I'm going to go to the search bar and type in JavaScript, hit enter, and you'll be able to see all the different courses that exist for JavaScript. So for example, this modern JavaScript from the beginning course has a lot of good ratings, over 1,000 ratings, 4.7 on average, and it's a 22-hour course for $12.99. And it's probably really good. So you can click on the course, and you could preview some of the lessons in the course. So you can see if the course is for you or if you're going to be interested in what the instructor is going to be teaching. So check out the previews, and you could also check out the curriculum for the course. You could see what they have lectures on and what you're going to be learning throughout. Personally, I've done about 10 courses myself, and I've learned a whole bunch from some really amazing instructors. I hope this video was helpful in guiding you to a few resources that you can use to learn and continue to learn how to code. But if you have any suggestions on other resources that other people can benefit from, feel free to post that in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.